Hi, uh, I'm Moss. <laughs> and I'm Laura. <laughs> and I think you're talking next. Ah, okay, great. You're right, I am talking next. Cool. So, um, who here has pair programmed? Okay. Who here has pair programmed more than like three times? Okay. Excellent. Um. So, uh, how did it go? <laughs> that, that sounds familiar. Uh, what are some things, um, well, actually, for those who haven't pair programmed, uh, it, kind of how do you imagine it going? What kind of thoughts about it drew you to come to this in the first place? Uh, so now that we've talked about your experience and a little bit about ours, we'll talk just a little more about ours and then move on. Um, so. Uh, We'll pair on this because that's what we do. Uh, so Moss, how did you first get interested in pair programming? Well, Laura, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 how did I get interested in pair programming? Ba basically, um, when I first got out of you know my liberal arts college and somehow landed a job as like the only programmer at a place. I found myself sort of in over my head and went looking around online for advice on how to do things and somehow landed on uh, Ward Cunningham's uh, Wiki Wiki web um, and got masses of great advice there. Um, and uh, in particular, um, kind of, there was a lot of conversation about extreme programming um, at, at the time, which is a, uh, methodology that I think is not all too widely remembered at this point, but it was uh, uh, kind of as useful as it is embarrassingly named. Um, and uh, one of the practices that it, it sort of proposed for people was, it was pair programming very heavily, basically on all production code. And that kind of got me curious about it. Um, but like I said, I was the only programmer at this place at the time, so um, I sort of let that play around in my head, and then a few years later, ended up uh, getting a job uh, at a place that paired all the time and did a bunch of other great stuff, um, and actually got some experience with it. Uh, so how about you, Laura? How did you get interested in pairing? <laughs> okay, I'm glad you asked. Um, so uh, it was a somewhat similar path, though not exactly the same. Um, I had learned about, about test-driven development early on as a developer, and I had found that that was really useful and seemed to make my code have better test coverage than a lot of the other people I was working with for one thing, though that, that wasn't the only thing. It's not just about that. Um, and so I also read more about various XP practices and so forth. Uh, and then I saw, similarly, a job opening that involved doing more of those things. And I thought, well, I could probably get better at these things by doing them with others. Uh, and so that was appealing. And so I went and interviewed and paired most of the day, and it was exhausting, but somehow still seemed like a good idea. <laughs> so, now that you've paired for a few years, is there anything you wish someone had told you when you were getting started? I wish somebody had told me it was okay not to know stuff. Um, because, <laughs> uh, like, especially if you're used to kind of programming culture where there tends to be a lot of, like, talking down to people if they don't understand something and kind of trying to show off how how much of an expert you are in something. Um, it, if you're programming on something and there's somebody like right there watching you, it's really easy to be kind of intimidated and that just makes it like way, way harder to learn anything. Um, so I, I think I could have, uh, if I could go back in time and tell myself one thing about pairing, um, I would cheat and tell myself two things. Uh, one is uh, to to be like much more open about like when I'm not understanding something and ask like don't be afraid to ask the questions that feel dumb. Um, and uh, then also, uh, as I got more experience, I would tell me to uh, make sure to uh, not make people feel dumb for asking those questions and to kind of reinforce the like goodness of like. Not knowing how stuff works and digging into stuff and like 
playing with stuff to try to figure out how it works, because if you're wondering about something, there's a good chance that somebody else is, too. Um, so yeah, that. Uh, Laura, is there anything you wish uh, someone had told you uh, when you were getting started? <laughs> I wish they had told me it did not involve actual fruit because pears are delicious and I was disappointed. <laughs> I don't have a really great answer to that and I kind of want to move on to the next part. Okay. <laughs> which, which button is it? Uh, the right arrow button. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so the thing we came here to talk about is pair programming games. Um, so uh, pair programming games, uh, as I, we both mentioned, though I don't think explicitly said that we took these job pair programming all the time. Uh, we didn't explicitly say we were on the same team after the point where I joined it. Oh yeah, um, that, that was like me being one of the people in that interview that didn't turn Laura off of pairing, so yay. Um. <laughs> yes, um, so we were working on a team. Uh, we were together on it for about three and a half years. Um, you were on it longer than I was. Uh, and uh, we paired basically all the time. Um, a lot of the time it went really well and it was productive and helpful and so forth. Um, and you know, but not always, right? Sometimes it felt like it wasn't as good or it could be better. Uh, so, you know, we, we thought about this and we as a team, you know, we tended to do things where we regularly tried to improve how we were working and so forth. Uh, and so pairing was one of the things we started talking about. Yeah, and so we, we sort of I guess a bunch of us had this pattern of like doing little coding exercises to sort of work on other design skills, to work on to work on TDD, to work on just sort of thinking about clean object-oriented code, um, and we started thinking about like, hey, are are there things like that we could do with pairing, um, and it sort of ended up coming with the, uh, coming up with a few sort of little games where we'd pair for a while in a kind of very constrained format. Um, and kind of concentrate on one aspect of kind of what pairing looked like when it was going well. We had a conversation very much like the one at the beginning of, of this workshop, trying to sort of think through what we recognized in good pairing and then tried to make ourselves do more of it. Um, and um, so now we are going to try to get you folks doing uh, a few of those games. Um, and uh, in order to do that, uh, we are of course going to have to talk about uh, Roman numerals, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> uh, it, <laughs> Is, so um, we're going to have you doing. We're going to have you pairing up and working on some code, um, and uh, we wanted to give you all a relatively straightforward problem to work on. Um, are you going to the whiteboard? Oh my god! Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, we wanted to give you all a, a like relatively straightforward problem to work on, just so that there would be like some clearly understood thing, and you wouldn't have to spend like the entire first pairing session just deciding what to do. Um, and so um, we're going to have you write a Roman numeral translator. Um, so this is going to be um, a, a, ultimately you're going to need a function that um, it takes in a number and gives you back the Roman numeral version of that. <laughs> um, and uh, for those of you who, uh, like me, had forgotten a lot of the details of how Roman numerals work, um, M means a thousand. Um, and you can uh, like add things up, so you, so like mmm means three thousand. If I got the length of that mmm <laughs> right, um, uh, D means five hundred. Does D mean five hundred? Yes. Yes. Um, C means one hundred. Uh, L means fifty. X means ten. V means five, and I means one. Um, and you sort of make make numbers by stacking up the kind of largest pieces you can and then moving on to the smaller ones. Um, and then there's also this thing where um, you can use like a littler number to subtract from the one ahead of it. So you can say like MIM means 1999. Um, or like IX means nine. Do I have that right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, if, uh, um, so as your first coding problem, um, the goal is going to be to write something that takes a number, gives you back a Roman numeral. Feel free to start 
um, with a like way less complete implementation. It's okay if you don't do the like little clever subtracty thing. It's even okay at a first pass if you just like represent 15 as a row of 15 eyes um, and then sort of build up from there. Um, this is meant to be sort of gradual evolution. Um, if you get all of this stuff working, um, a good next step um, is uh, to then go in and take some, write something that takes a Roman numeral and gives you back an int value for it. Um, if you get that working, feel free to invent new things to do. Um, I would say one thing you could do is like write, write a little calculator for Roman numerals. Um, <laughs> so like something that knows that MC plus MX equals MMCX. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's, let's see, they, is there anything I missed in that explanation? If so, it'll come up. Great. I assume you use whatever language you want. Uh, yes. Um, so, speaking of which, uh, let's actually start forming some pairs. Uh, first off, who all has a laptop with some kind of programming environment on it? Um, and let's say enough that you could run a test of some code. Awesome. <laughs> um, uh, just uh, wh what languages are people running? Just sort of call out what you've got installed. So, <laughs> so some JavaScript, a bunch of py Python, a little bit of Java, some PHP. Um, did I miss anything in there? Someone said C. Someone said C. Wow. Um, I. Um, we're going to circulate people around. I might actually suggest avoiding um, C for this exercise, um, unless it's uh, unless you know it really, really well, um, and are comfortable kind of mentoring a little bit and can write a unit test in it. Um, just because um, I, I want to spend as little time kind of learning <laughs> learning learning new tools as possible. Uh, for the sake of this, um, I I have sadly similar things to say about my favorite editor, VI. Um, if you're using it and you have the choice of anything that's more accessible to people that don't already know it, um, that's probably the right choice for this session. Um, although, if you don't have a, an alternative, I mean, just let them know. <laughs> um, and yeah, like I said, I've totally worked on, like, I've totally been on pair programming teams that used that regularly. It's no obstacle, just uh, this is a exercise with a bunch of people with different uh, backgrounds. <laughs> um, okay, so shall we get into the uh, first game? So th this is uh, pairing ping pong. Yes, so uh, this is pairing ping pong, uh, which is not a thing that we invented. This was already around, but we sort of noticed that it did fit right into this idea of a game. Um, so uh, one thing that is it is used for is for when you're doing TDD, or test-driven development. Uh, so I'll talk briefly about that. Uh, helpfully, for those who were at Karanda's keynote yesterday, she uh, <laughs> said a little bit about it, so you're all experts now. So, uh, uh, but, you know, yeah? So who all has already done like some TDD regularly? Okay, yeah, excellent. Right. Yeah, so yes, yes, good check. <laughs> good idea. Um, yeah, so uh, for the basic idea there uh, is that the first thing you do is you, well, you figure out the first thing you're trying to do, uh, and then for that first thing you're trying to do, you write a test. Uh, and it should be probably a pretty simple test. for. So for in the case of, in this example, it would probably literally be testing that uh, one turns into the Roman numeral I. Did I get the right direction? Excellent. Okay, so that one turns into the Roman numeral I. So you'd write a test uh, that just you know says that when you call the function you're writing uh, with an input of one, the output you get is the string I. Um, literally as simple as that, and you run it, you run this test, and it fails. Um, I mean, if you're in a compiled language, it doesn't even compile, because you haven't written the function yet. Uh, so then you do what you need to do to make it pass. So write enough code to make it pass, uh, which probably 
literally that will say something like return one, return the string i. See, I knew I was going to get it backward at some point. Um, so at then at that point, uh, you run your test and you expect it to pass, and it does pass. Uh, and then you would make another test for another case. Uh, you would run it and make sure it fails, and make sure it fails in the way you expect. Um, probably it will, because this is a fairly straightforward example. Then you write enough code to make it pass, and so forth. Uh, at some point, while the tests are all passing, everything is green, as people say, uh, you might find that you want to clean up the code, because maybe you've hard-coded some things, or maybe in whatever way you want to clean it up. Uh, and you keep going like that, and that is the basic idea of TDD really quickly. Uh, so pairing ping pong is a game that uh, sort of builds off of that. Um, uh, basically, uh, one person in the pair uh, writes a test and then hands over the keyboard to the other person, um, and then they make it pass, they do any cleanup they want to, and then they write the next test and pack it, pass it back to the first person, and you just sort of go on back and forth like that for, uh, for a while. Um, and that's what we're going to have you do for the next, um, let's say, 20 minutes? All right. Uh, then uh, Laura's going to introduce the next game. <laughs> OK. Uh, welcome to the next game, which is called Farsighted Navigator. Uh, so I think we've possibly used these terms without defining them, or if not, here's the first introduction, uh, driver and navigator. Uh, driver just means the person who, <laughs> who is <laughs> at the steering wheel or keyboard in this case, uh, and the navigator is the other person. Uh, we've talked at times about, oh, well, when I'm not the person at the keyboard, I'm not sure what to do. Um, so another way of saying that is, well, when I'm the navigator, I'm not always sure what to do. Uh, so in this, in this game, these roles are pretty well-defined, probably more well-defined than you'll find they are generally in pairing, or at least than I find they are. Uh, but so uh, the idea of this game is that the driver, the person at the keyboard, uh, can only build what the navigator requests. So the navigator is, in fact, sort of you know navigating, uh, as you might with a map telling someone where to go um, before we all just had that in our phones. Um, and <laughs> so you know the navigator is sort of deciding where to go. Uh, but the navigator is not saying, you know, write, write a method that's, you know, open, you know, and then the method name, and then open paren, and then blah, 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 and then close paren. So, um, what letter do I type next? Uh, <laughs> X. No. Um, so the navigator, in fact, in this particular, the navigator can talk only about design, not about implementation. So this is not a dictation exercise. <laughs> so does that make sense when I say that? OK, well, then I'm not going to try to find something else to say about it. Uh, so let's do that also for 15 minutes. Let's, let's call it 10 minutes. OK, 10 minutes, yes. Um, and oh, and you will uh, switch pairs at, at least at one point partway through. Uh, oh, there's a question. I was going to ask friends. <laughs> ah, uh, shall we at we'll, halfway through yeah, say we'll, to switch we'll if you haven't? The half mark, the halfway mark, uh, yeah. Switch roles. <laughs> yeah. OK. Um, yes, and it's keep going on the same problem. Um, well, if you have something that feels like a good state to start from. I mean, feel free to start over if you prefer, but. All right. Um, so we're going to have you uh, switch pairs again. Um, so there is, we have two conflicting goals here, because I'd like to have, um, as much as possible, I actually like three people circulate onto each code base, um, but also, you're at a conference full of a bunch of strange people, and maybe you don't want to like walk away from your computer. <laughs> um, so, um, if you're if you're at your own computer um, and you're comfortable letting two complete strangers pair on it for a little while, uh, stand up. <laughs> uh, remember early on in the sort of conversation about good pairing, where we said that uh, a lot of kind of active uh, active conversation is is important, and it's, it's a bad sign when it goes quiet. Um, also, remember earlier when somebody said um, that it's best if you treat it as sort of an improv game? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> um, this is basically uh, the improv game approach to pairing. Um, and uh, we're going to give you three rules for the final 10-minute uh, round of this. Um, the first one is no talking. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Um, the, uh, it, it, so because you're not talking, um, that's going to uh, make it hard to communicate using anything but the code on the screen. Uh, so the next rule is uh, make sure you frequently switch who's typing. Um, so make sure that everybody's getting a chance to sort of jump in to, to the keyboard. Um, I, as a rule of thumb, if like a minute or two goes by with one person typing, um, it's a good sign that it's probably time to, to switch. Um, and uh, the third rule is say yes and instead of no but. Uh, so um, what you should not do is um, sort of just get into an edit war with your pair where like <laughs> you say, hey, <laughs> I don't like this way of doing it. I'm just going to erase this and like rewrite it the right way. Um, if what you should do is sort of build on what they're writing. Now, you might be building on it by sort of taking it and refactoring what's there to clean it up or to sort of move it in what you think is a more useful direction, but you still need to be building on it, not just like ignoring or replacing it. Uh, um, and as usual, um, we're going to give you 10 minutes. Um, if you want to say more about this, uh, you can find us on Twitter. Uh, you can also find us around the conference for the next uh, two and a half days. Um, and yeah, thank you all for coming. Yeah. <laughs>